May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Have any of you ever seen the film documentary, The Wire? It's the story of a man by the name of Philip, who 40 years ago today, strung a wire across the Twin Towers in New York City and walked the wire. He and a small little band of kind of outlaw renegades plotted, worked, and practiced for this to happen for years. Uh, if you see the documentary, you will see him literally in his backyard with something probably about that high and maybe twice this long practicing <laughs> for something that would have, almost has no parallel when you think about the trade the winds that are going on that kind of height the level of danger that it, but they did it it's something that has actually captured the imagination of people ever since so much so that i found out this morning that they are making a movie about all of this um, of course, not starring Philippe anymore, he's an old man. But that's what they're doing. I mention that today because if you were, or any of us, or even actually a really well-trained circus performer, were to come to his friends or her friends and say, I'm planning to string a wire across the Twin Towers to walk across it, he would just think they're nuts. That They had a death wish of some kind. But he was extraordinarily determined to see it through, and in fact, he did. I actually think it takes just as much imagination to do what he did as it does to imagine what happened when Peter, Jesus is Peter and his disciples at Caesarea Philippi and says, who do you say that I am? And what comes back to him is, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's just as an outrageous a statement, if not more so, actually, than saying, I'm going to build a wire across the Twin, twin Towers. I mean, we're so, in some ways, comfortable with it because it's our bread and butter. But for Peter to have articulated that, at, in fact, both the heart of pagan worship because Caesarea Philippi had this grotto, and that's where they went to worship Pan. Um, and in Caesarea Philippi, recently named in the time of Jesus, because of a huge temple worshiping Caesar and Caesarea Philippi, I don't think the geographic location is any accident. And yet, if you think about it, here is on the one hand, century old, centuries old tradition of a kind of pagan syncretism embodied in Pan. On the other hand, you have this huge, extraordinarily wealthy and powerful statement of the political religious power of Caesar. And yet, here's Jesus, 30-year-old fisherman, with a bunch of other fishermen, tax collectors. Not in any way rich and powerful people of any way, shape, or form. And yet, this is the confession that literally brought an end in that region to both paganism as well as the worship of Caesar. I, I want us to think like that because it seems to me we live in an age that really has accepted both a kind of pagan version of syncretism all religious roads lead, to, in fact, to the same end. Or almost a deification of religious political power, really embodied in what we see in ISIS, for example. And here we are, and I speak of Christians, saying in the midst of that something that is far, far more powerful, that this human being, Jesus, is the fulfillment of all of the promises of Israel. The very Old Testament reading about God writing their law in their hearts and they shall know the Lord from the east and 
from the least to the greatest is actually fulfilled in Peter on his own saying to Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It just happened. Jeremiah happened in that moment. To be able to say that this is the thing on which with an equal level, I hope, of imagination, ingenuity, and courage are willing to live out the full implications of that kind of confession. That we literally eschew the mundane for the sake of willing to do the daring because we so profoundly believe that this fisherman is in fact the son of the living God. And notice, the son of the living God. In other words, the God who is in fact active, who is doing things, who is actually manifesting himself in very clear, extraordinarily miraculous ways. It's a life changer. It is the hinge that literally defines the very essence of who we are. There's a lot you can get rid of in the Christian faith and still be Christian. But you, can't, you can no longer claim Christianity if you're not willing to say from the deepest conviction of your hearts, you, Jesus, are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's the dividing line. Nothing else, in fact, is. If you can argue about all kinds of things, whether you're talking about politics or ethics or whether you're talking about how Christians should spend their money, all of that stuff is still an in-house argument. If you're talking about people who say profoundly, I believe that Jesus is, in fact, Messiah, the Son of the living God. If they're not willing to say that, then no matter what they wear, including if they dress like this, I, I'm not sure we're having an in-house argument anymore. Because that's the dividing line. Always has been, always will be. Until this one whom we call Messiah literally returns and establishes a new heaven and a new earth. So I guess in this very brief little homily, my plea is for imagination. Philippe literally captured people's imagination by doing something like creating this wire across the Twin Towers. So the people are now still talking about it 40 years later. Is it possible for us to think creatively and prayerfully to say, what can we do to express this life-changing confession in such a way that literally captures people's imagination and causes them to live so that this confession is at the very heart of who they are. Not just one in a set of beliefs, but literally the hinge on which their life gets expressed. Because that's what happened to Peter. And that is in fact what is meant to happen to any who are willing to be so bold as to make that confession. Even in the face of a long history of traditions, traditional syncretism and religious political power, we still dare say, you, Jesus, are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and on that, we stake our lives. Amen. Amen. Amen.